surgery short cases lump examination definitely in your exam they will give at least two to three short surgical cases regarding the lump examination that mean lump examination is very important most probably the first question will be please examine this patient this region please examine this patient this lump please examine this patient inguinal region unfortunately you can't see my inguinal region please examine this patient neck please examine this patient breast if somebody asks from you please examine how are you going to approach the usual approach is inspection you have to show you are properly inspect the patient inspection then palpation followed by percussion followed by auscultation but when coming to lump examination don't try to do percussion and auscultation unless really important the most important two is inspection followed by palpation what are the thing you are going to see in the inspection first of all number one site where i am situated if you found a lump in the neck region it is very very unlikely to be i to say testicular region so site is very important most probably it can be thyroid origin or thyroid cyst or cystic hydroma but very unlikely to be testicular origin so site is very important number two size how big it it can be smaller one like this small one or it can be medium size it can be large huge lump sometimes if you want you can say uk size six lump uk size ten lump uk size sixteen lump don't try to say like that try to say exact centimeter third one say some lump are hemispherical in shape like this hemispherical in that case you have to tell the diameter of lump only diameter is enough some lump are oval in shape oval shape in that case you have to tell this length and this length both otherwise no point of time some lump are sausage in shape for the sausage lovers especially indirect inguinal hernia sausage in shape so you have to tell the size you have to tell the size you have to tell the shape you have to tell about the overlying skin this is your lump this is your overlying skin you have to tell about the overlying skin what happened to it there can be scar it will indicate previous surgery there can be scar there can be red red in color it may indicate some inflammation there can be ulcer on top of that so you have to tell about overlying skin when you are inspecting the lump now your inspection is over what i am going to check site size shape and the overlying skin then you have to move into the palpation number 1 surface again this is your lump now you are going to palpate your patient lump once you palpate you can say this lump is have smooth surface what smooth surface some lump surface not smooth they have what rough surface rough surface so surface can be smooth or rough when you palpate it number 2 edges what happened to edge sometimes you will find this kind of edge edge well demarcated well demarcated edges you can clearly palpate the edges sometimes you can get lump like this but still you can clearly palpate the edges but sometimes you will get get this kind of lump you can feel edge from here to here this edges you can't feel this one again can 
this one can't. Likewise, in that case, we are going to take called ill-defined ill-defined edges. This one is well defined. Why Dr. Dinosh is so much talking about this? It has very important clinical significance. Most probably, ill-defined edges are belong to cancer. Well-defined edges are belong to benign tumors. Most probably, not hundred percent. So, next one, tissue pain. What does mean tissue pain? Where your lump? Where your lump? This is your lump. Sorry, this is your lump. This is your skin. This underlying muscle or bone. This one is muscle, muscle or bone. This one is skin. When palpating, you have to you have to check your lump is belong to which tissue plate. Whether it is attached to muscles, whether it is attached to skin. If it is attached to muscle, what happens? When you try to move the lump, does it move? No. Sometimes it can move a little bit. Why? Your muscle also a little bit lax. So it can move. Then what are you going to do? Ask patient to contract that muscle. Then you try to move the lump. If you can't move the lump, that means lump is attached to muscle. Lump is if lump is attached to bone, definitely you can't move. If lump is attached to tendon, once you contract it, you can't move the lump. So, once it's attached to underlying structure, you can't move. You can't move. Once it's attached to skin, what happens? You can't move skin. You can't move skin. How are you going to move skin? You have to keep two fingers like this and you have to roll over the lump. If you can roll or skin over the lump, if you can roll skin over the lump, you can say yes, your lump is not atta attached to the skin. In that case, lump is in between the muscle and skin here, not attached to both. Lump is in between the skin and muscles. How are you going to check? Muscle attachment, you can you ask to contract the muscles and you try to move the lump, skin attachment, you have to keep the finger and you have to rotate it and you can see it can move over the lump. You have to do in the 90 degree direction in order to identify the whether it is skin is moving to this direction and this direction both. Tissue plane. Next one is consistency. Consistency means what inside you are lump. How are you going to check it? You have to press your lump. You have to press your lump. Once you press it, if you feel this like feeling, it is soft. If you feel nose like feeling, it is firm. If you feel forehead like hard feeling, it is hard. Content is hard. Consistency is hard. How? It can be soft. It can be soft like your lip. It can be firm. It can be firm like your nose. It can be hard like your forehead. So that is the consistency. Next one, fluctuation. If you found a lump with soft to firm, you have to check whether that lump is fluctuating or not. How are you going to check? This is your lump. This is your finger. You have to keep finger either side of the lump. One finger here, one finger here. By using other hand, you have to press the middle part of the lump. You have to press the middle part of the lump. If it is contained soft or firm thing, that means most probably liquid or semi-solid material inside your lump. That pressure, once you press it, that pressure going to transmit into the your both hand, both finger. You can feel it. That means your lump is fluctuant into this direction. After that, what I am going to do is, 
you have to keep finger like this now. And again press and check whether your lump is plugged thrown into this direction as well. If your lump is plugged thrown into both direction, both horizontal and vertical direction, you can say your lump shows cross fluctuation. But this is look, look like cross cross fluctuation is there. That is the fluctuation. If you found a patient lump with soft to firm with fluctuation, that means most probably that lump contain fluid within it, fluid or semi-solid liquid material within it. If so, you have to identify whether that one contained clear liquid like fluid or some kind of turbid fluid. Well, how are you going to check that one? For that, you have to use pen torch. That is called trans illumination. You have to keep your pen torch here. Then, what are you going to do? On the pen torch, once you on the pen torch, this little experiment I think you have done in your childhood. Keep pen here, pen torch here. You can see the light color or redness, red color here. The same thing here you have done. Keep pen here and switch on. Once you switch on, what happen? It will. If it is contain clear fluid, you can clearly see light source come out from here. If it is contain thick material, it will be very difficult to see the light source. Why? Light source not going to travel through this thick material. If it is contain clear one, clear fluid, the light source you can see brilliantly here. We are going to call it as brilliantly, excellently transilluminate or brilliantly transilluminate. Sometimes some lamp are poorly transilluminate. With the ambient light, you will not able to see in the exam. For that, what you should do is bring some hollow light instrument and keep your eye here. Once you flash on the light, keep that hollow, hollow tube into the lump and look through your eye. Then you can see the brightness. Why other ambient light not come into your eye? So, you have to carry some hollow light, tube light instrument. You can make it from X-ray card. So you have to check whether it is trans illuminant or not. Especially if it is soft to firm with fluctuation. Next one. You have to check the temperature. You have to check the temperature. How are you going to check temperature? You have to keep the hand and check whether it is it have high temperature or warm or cold. Usually with the lump with the inflammation, lump with inflammation, you can see high temperature is there. Temperature is high. Lump with inflammation. Next one, reducibility. Reducibility. What that does mean? Whether you can reduce the size of lump, especially when you come into inguinal hernia, you can push back into the abdomen. Once you come into the umbilical hernia, sometimes you can push back into the abdomen. Lipoma may not be possible. So reducibility means whether you or patient able to reduce the size of lump. Here you. Why you are the one going to palpate? Whether you can reduce the size of lump. Don't try to reduce each and every lump size, especially in the lipoma size, sebaceous size. Mainly this reducibility you have to check for the hernia. Hernia is the one most of the time you can reduce. Sometimes obstructed hernia you may not be able to reduce the size. So reducibility. Next one, pulses tilting. Whether it is pulsating some vascular tumor, vascular lump. If you carefully look, you can feel the pulsation. With the systole and diastole, what happened? Blood supply to the lump going to be changed. This is your blood vessels, vascular lump. With the systole, what happened? It start to little bit pulsatile action. So pulsatility you can feel with the vascular lump. Next one, check for the palpable lymph node. Check for the palpable lymph node, especially in the what? In the malignancies and 
inflammatory lump with the inflammatory lump what happen you can have reactive lymph node if you found the inflammatory vessel up here with that you can have reactive lymph node in the axilla or if you have cancerous breast lump with that what happen metastatic lymph node you can see in the axilla that is how you are going to examine i have one question can you when you check in the tissue plane when you check in the tissue plane instead of rolling the skin over the lump likewise can you pinch the skin up you can pinch here and pull up can you use that to check whether it is attached to skin or not to identify that can you check that one sometime yes again sometime no why not if you pinch here if you pinch here due to some reason if you catch this lump you think your lump is moving or your lump is attached to here but you going to pinch from here you can pinch skin now but still your lump is attached to skin last one pinching can cause pain it is not nice while you are examining it. so what are the thing you are going to palpate now surface whether it is smooth or rough edges whether it is illifying or well defined tissue plane whether it is attached to skin bone or muscles underlying structure consistency soft firm or hard fluctuation whether it is heavy fluctuation and cross fluctuation together and whether it is trans illuminant or not you have to check the temperature you have to check for the reducibility you have to check for the pulse time action you have to check for the lymph node that is how you are going to examine your patient lump